to discuss, uh, we're now joined by the CEO of the Fuel Retailers Association, uh, Reggie Sabia. Thank you for joining us, Reggie. It's my pleasure, Francis. So, you know, it sounds like there's a bit of panic, which ironically will lead everyone to the petrol pumps, uh, maybe when they wouldn't have gone otherwise. Could that ironically cause a shortage? Well, uh, ironically, actually, it has started, uh, and, and, and we can actually confirm that it is basically the panic, you know, uh, it is uh, unlikely that the strike uh, would have an impact, but there are service stations already uh, reporting uh, run tries, and I, I strongly believe that is because of the panic, uh, obviously with the media hype that's been going around uh, the matter. So, but my advice is that, you know, uh, we, we've had these types of uh, strikes before. Um, it actually impacts more the, 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 the fuel retailer than the motorist, and I can qualify that, you know, for a motorist, uh, there is never a situation where in your area all service stations will run dry. Mm. So there will always be some service stations. So the only thing is just the inconvenience of not filling up where you normally used to fill to. However, from the uh, fuel retailer perspective, I mean, to have one day of no, sh of no, of no stock uh, is, is actually quite uh, serious, and uh, especially for low volume sites. So we are very concerned with uh, the ripple effect. I, I want to talk about that because you are representing those petrol stations, basically, that are caught up in this, even though they are not the ones being yes. striked against, if, if mm. I can say that. Mm. Um, l let's just quickly clarify the, the outages. So, so you say because there's competition in the market, we are seeing a bit of panic, some running dry, uh, but if the BP is out, the engine will still have petrol, that type of thing. Yeah, that's, that's normally been the, 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 the trend uh, 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 that, uh, you know, different oil companies have got different uh, contingency plans uh, in place. And uh, we have been in consistent uh, communication with Sapia and they have assured us, you know, that there are plans uh, to try and mitigate the impact. But I think inevitably there will be one or two service stations dry in any other area at any point in time. So. Uh, what we are then appealing to motorists is that, you know, they shouldn't be panic buying at this stage, you know, and... Calm uh, down. <laughs> just calm down. Uh, and also what we appeal to uh, Sapia members uh, who have been served with uh, the notice to strike, which is the oil companies, is that there should be uh, effective communication between them and us. You know, the disadvantage for us is that we are right at the end of the value chain. So, you know, it doesn't, every time there is a blockage, uh, like in refineries and in depots, we actually suffer. Uh, and yet we are not part of the strength of, of the strike. So we will actually rely intensively on that uh, effective communication because, as you can imagine, one of the ways that we also need to minimize our losses is to ensure that if there is no uh, stock that day, uh, there is no use to actually have a full uh, employment on site, so that communication helps us as retailers to plan effectively for things like short time to minimize the cost of Can, uh, can you uh, explain the supply chain to us quickly? So there are these big refineries, depots, where are they? How long does it take? How often is, is petrol delivered? Okay, so the value chain really starts at the refinery where the product is refined and from there it then moves to the depots where it's stored in various uh, regions. Uh, and it goes there via the pipeline or through road uh, transport. And then from the depots, it then moves to the service station. Now, um, uh, for a service station, most of the deliveries actually happened, uh, happens at night. And it depends on, uh, on how uh, big the service station is. I mean, some will get about two deliveries a week. One, a small ones will get like one delivery a week. Some can get, go up to three deliveries, deliveries mm. a week. So that is actually the nature of then, uh, the, the, the value chain. And so if you are a small service station, it sounds like you do suffer because you have to wait for your next delivery as well. And, and I guess mm -hmm. throw in the overall impact because this isn't the first time this ha it has happened. So tell me how the people you represent do suffer, in fact. Absolutely. Uh, you, know, you see now, I always say for a small service station, uh, they cannot even afford a day without fuel. That's, 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 that's number one. So not having fuel is a major impact. In fact, we do see after strikes uh, a lot of exchange of hands, and it's mainly on the uh, small service station because it impacts on their cash yeah, flow. So people have to sell, basically. They've got to sell. And also the other issue is that um, 
when it comes to strike, uh, because now oil companies have got to prioritize. They can't, if there's a product shortage, shortage obviously they've got the 80-20 principle kicks in. And again, the small service stations uh, have it, a double whammy there, because then they are not uh, on the top priority list. So that they just impact it all the time. But overall, I think all the service stations suffer, and we actually do um, uh, hope that this uh, will be resolved uh, as soon as possible. All right, I hope so too. Thank you for your time, Reggie Sabia uh, from the Fuel Retailers Association.